I've been making a fuss about it for over a year now. I've been writing and speaking about various banks that have excluded people and organizations, very often charities, simply because they didn't like their politics, they didn't like their social view of things. Um, for example, um, anti-abortion charity, um, the Free Speech Union, that was cancelled by PayPal. Us for Them charity was cancelled also by PayPal. Um, there, it's not just NatWest, and I would like to see a root and branch change across the banking sector. What kind of reform are we talking about here, do you think, Jasmine? What kind of regulation do we need? Because banks have become, haven't they, moral arbiters. And we didn't seem to realise until Nigel Farage lifted a lid on it all. Yes, I, really, I do think it's hilarious that, that banks um, set themselves up, as you say, as moral arbiters, given that all of the main banks, you know, particularly the bigger ones, are regularly and annually fined millions of pounds for all sorts of bad behavior on, on their part. So, you know, that they set themselves up as, as deciding who's who's good and who isn't is, is quite hilarious. Um, but I think what we very much need uh, here is, is stronger laws um, to, to stop banks, which are, of course, companies and in one sense you could say they can they can say yay or nay to whoever they like but they're offering a service and it's an essential service so i think in this case it is right that we have laws that tell them who the, what criteria they can use to keep or to reject customers because i think all of us would be perfectly happy for for banks to reject fraudsters, money launderers, that sort of, of thing, you know, that's entirely reasonable. But I think most of us would feel, no, it's not reasonable for a bank to, to reject somebody or an organization simply because they don't like their politics or they don't like their, their view of society. That is unacceptable. Jasmine, do, do you think there will be a wake-up call with the financial institutions that they will suddenly go do you know what? Yeah, we were. This is a bit out of order. We shouldn't have been doing this, and that they will voluntarily change things before they may be forced to change things. Well, it's it's possible, but this type of thinking, of course, as we know, is not just confined to banks. Um, we we're seeing this sense of excluding those who don't think the way you want them to think across so many institutions. We see it very much in academia. We're seeing it in the civil service. Um, we're seeing it in the health service, um, certainly in politics and parts of politics. So banking is just one of the areas where this nasty way of thinking has taken root. Um, so some might, but I think it will take quite a long time for, for particularly the, the younger um, levels, you know, those in their 20s and 30s who've, who've grown up being quite often indoctrinated in this, this way of thinking, for them to change their view. Um, so I think, sadly, um, this is something that does need some legislation, and I'd like to see it not just in the banking sector, but in other parts of, of our lives, uh, particularly, I would say, starting with academia.